Every brother was caught in the crossfire. Was caught in the crossfire. Without mercy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another one of my Albion build videos. This is going to be the healer build that I actually go for at the moment. And let me tell you, man, this <laughs> goodness, this healer build is what I've been using in 2v2 Hellgates uh, with my friend. And it's honestly absolutely insane um, in terms of healing uh, a single target. Uh, keep in mind, we are using the, the nature staff section. We're using the Druidic Staff, and I really think that once you hit level 40 with this, you should go for this hit and run, by the way. Um, and protection of nature, once you get it. So once you actually unlock these, I think these are really good. Uh, let's just get a quick overview of what this build is and why I think it's incredibly good for 2v2 Hellgates. And I think it's one of the best for 2v2 Hellgates anyway. I mean, there's other paths, obviously, that you can choose. Um, like if you're gonna play 5v5 Hellgates, you're gonna want something that's like AoE healing, but this is mainly, the reason this is good is because it's focused on single target healing, and that's what you really want to be doing mainly, because it's just you and your friend. Um, here's one thing, right? The Druidic Staff, rejuvenate, uh, if I can say this properly, rejuvenation, uh, is three stacks, so you obviously stack it once twice three but you never want to proc it again like now it's on three you see that there if i now the healing would be gone and you restore energy which is really not ideal you always want to have three stacks as much as possible on your teammates or on yourself and another quick tip before i go on the full build is alt q to self cast alt e alt w you do this instead of left click yourself and then press q if you get if you go, I mean, so like, let's say I'll go to someone now, okay, I left click him, I see him here, I press Q, it's gonna heal him, and then I press Alt Q, and then Q, like that, see, I'm not swapping the targets at all, it's still here, so I can transition between healing, and that's something you need to be able to know when you're 2v2 hellgating, is that you need to be able to heal yourself without necessarily having to click on yourself, so this way you can heal you and your friend very effectively. Um, Alt Q, you know, it's just, I think this is the simple way to heal, and I think it's the good way uh, to be a good healer and to pity Huggets. But, let's talk about the full build. First, Guardian Helmet, Fiend Rope, Druid Sandals, I'll explain why, Mist Collar, and Expert Druidic Staff. Uh, it can all be 4.1 gear, but I have tier 5.1 here because it's cheap. And Druidic Sandals has to be tier 5, by the way, um, because without without this, you won't have efficiency. You won't have 6% reduced energy costs. And it is not good to go 12% reduced energy costs on the rope, because you want the increased heal and damage on your Fiend Rope. You're really not going to be doing damage, it's mainly for the healing, okay? So, st one by one now we'll talk, okay? We've got Regenovation, which is the Q stacks. This we go revitalize for now, but you want this for sure. Basically what this does is when you cast it on yourself or an ally, you increase their armor and magic resistance, their total resistance. And they also increases the healing received. So really, it's a lifesaver, man. It really is. Like, you use protection of nature and then use, and then use your spiritual seed, right? So it says 365, but... 365 plus 50% increased healing. <laughs> how, how do you die? How do you die? Tell me. Like, it's an intense amount of healing. Anti heals will always be your biggest enemy. So, just really to be an effective healer, you want to use protection of nature first and then this. Or, since this has a cast time after 3 seconds, it's actually good to simply do this Alt E and then Alt W without this thing, obviously. Because if you notice that the E takes some time to actually go on you so what you want to do is you want to cast E and then you want to cast this right because this it has no cast time zero seconds the cast time on this is instant but after three seconds you get healed so basically I'll show you okay now you get healed 
basically you can use this first and then protection of nature which will increase the healing of that e for eight seconds um it stays there for eight seconds so just a just a tip to make you more efficient with cooldowns and finally you want hit and run when you unlock it because i mean this is not really amazing your heals become 40 percent stronger sure it's okay temporarily but this is really what you want but this is the best option until you unlock this basically right so that's it for the staff feed rope why do we pick feed rope because oh my goodness the fear the fear is a game changer is the feed rope can be a little bit expensive for some players uh, but you're 2v2 hell gating i mean if you if you want to win go for the fears man honestly you can just use this and push people away i've literally I've literally split like multiple people with this. Basically what I would do is I would stand in the middle and one person's here, the other person's here and I would fear them right in the middle. One goes one way, so I would push away the healer. So my teammate who's DPS will kill the other guy. It's like you push away the healer with your fear. It's literally like this. You, you activate it and then you keep following them. You heal yourself, whatever you have to do, and look how long it lasts, and you can push them completely. So, that's just something to keep in mind um, when using your Fiend Rope. Right, so that's Fiend Rope. And you want to go for increased damage and heal power. Keep in mind, if you're using Tier 5 Fiend Rope, your armor and magic resist will be higher, your max hit points will be higher, everything here you see in the stats will be higher. So generally, getting a higher Tier 1 is always better it's just more expensive i would go for that now because i have 1.4 million silver so been making mad money with 2v2 hellgate so and yeah this is what we would do for this now mist call mist caller is incredibly good because your healer that relies on cooldown reduction and you need to be able to cast abilities all the time you always want to have your e like you don't want your e to take so long until it comes back up like, this gives you almost 9% cooldown reduction meaning that this will be up faster which is you know it takes a while see you want this to be up you want all your heals to be up as soon as it like possible so you want to go for mess caller i think it's the best secondary for healer uh, for the druid staff build okay so we talked about these three now why druid sandals You're probably wondering like what is the point of this why why do you want to freeze them well here's the thing right First of all, every cloth tier 5 would have reduced energy cost. That's not the reason why. But the freeze walk is actually so effective. I've had fantastic experiences with it. Basically, what I would do is I would fear one guy. I'd keep pushing him. And then as I'm coming back, I'd slow him. I'd run over him and I'd slow him. So he takes longer to get back to his teammate. Because that slow is actually fucking nuts, by the way. Because it's an 80% slow. Obviously, he might have blinks and stuff like that. But you want to like slow him as you fear him after. So like one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to frost walk and then fear. You want to fear, and when you're max range fear away from them, then you want to slow them. Run like this, literally. So you fear them all the way. Fear them, fear them, fear them, fear them. And then once they reach the max, run over their body and then run back to your, to help your healer. And heal yourself, heal him, whatever. And I think that's the way to go, honestly. That's the way to do it. And that's how I would use Frostwalk. I'd also use Frostwalk just to help out. Um, like to help my teammate if he's being chased. And I'm healing him and he's being chased. I would walk over him. So I would walk over the enemy with Frostwalk. So my teammate can get away. Okay, so that's why we use Frostwalk. And I love it. I honestly love it and you can go whatever you want obviously but i just really love this and i really like it with the reduced energy cost so you uh, don't run out of energy when you're healing that'd be really really bad because that's be the, like the worst thing that could happen is you run out of energy that's why when you spam cues don't always spam them spam them spam them and like you want three stacks leave it at three stacks you don't have to use it again use more energy obviously it will restore energy um every four activated spells your heals become stronger and when you proc the third thing you restore energy from here so it restores 16 energy but it's not ideal to do that um when you have good amount of energy so you just keep it like this all right so next up would be guardian helmet now 
You probably think, what in the hell? Guardian helmet and this build, it just looks wrong. I mean, and this, well, that's why I love this game mainly, is because you can do whatever the hell you want with whatever kind of equipment you want. So, this instantly heals 10% of max health and removes any damage over time effects. So, if you have bleed, anti heals, it removes it. You get anti healed by a carrion collar. Let me show you. There's a really good anti heal item. This one. It's incredible against healers. See, look at this. The target's received healing is reduced by 35%, meaning that you're gonna be doing a lot less healing, like by 35% if you get hit by the Raven of Karen Collar. So that's why you wanna inspect and make sure. So what this would do is it would remove that and heal you for 10% of your max health. So if you have a higher tier Fiend Rope, like tier five, tier six, whatever that you get, and your max hit points would be higher because of it. Meaning that your emergency heal would actually be more healing. So it, it heals based on your total max health, well, 10% of your max health, sorry. Like based on how much that is at its max. So it's, it's actually nuts. Um, Cause this also heals your teammate. So you can literally go next to your teammate if your ability, let's say, oh shit, I don't have my Q, I don't have my W, oh my God, I have nothing, I have nothing. And these Q stacks are not enough to help my team. I just walk over him, this, boom. You heal him as long as you're next to him in a four meter radius around him. You will heal him and you will heal yourself. It's actually amazing. Like, like your teammate literally cannot die from this. Um, and obviously we go toughness, by the way, because I really think the increased CC duration is useless when you're playing this, and increased risk to movement. Like, you can go to an acid if you want, but I just don't see the point. I mean, this would be good if you left-click him and you see inspect, and let's say it's a tank with heavy crack control, sure, you can swap the tenacity. I mean, you, it's based on the situation, so you want to swap accordingly. You choose this or choose that. Keep in mind though, when you choose something, it resets all your global cooldowns. So that's something to keep in mind. I just go toughness because it's good. Reduce damage. You don't want to die as a healer, obviously. So you want to have reduced damage. That's what I would recommend. And finally, consumables. I think Pork Omelette is the best choice for all healers. No matter if you're using Druid Staff, whatever, I think it's the best choice because you want to have reduced cooldown periods, 100%. And Resistance Potion is in my opinion the best potion for healers as well because it increases your defense for a short period meaning that if you're getting really heavy heavy focused you just just heal yourself and then use that potion right it'll increase your defense by 41 percent also crowd resistance by 70 percent so if you're if you're really in trouble you're dropping low health you're like maybe like 20 percent health or something you're you're panicking just boom do this do this press d press x you'll increase your defense like I'm telling you man it's, it's such a great build um, and we've won a lot with it so I think this is the way to go for 2v2 Hellgate obviously there's many different theory crafting that you can do with with healer builds um, this is my one this is what I would recommend your cape and your bag don't necessarily matter by the way um, but for a cape, if you don't want to use standard adept cape or whatever, you can go for um, Limhurst. Limhurst cape is really good uh, for for this uh, healer build. Um, so I would I would probably use the Limhurst cape just for the energy. If I'm correct, it's the one that helps with the energy. So you could use that just to make sure you don't run out of energy in TVT Hellgates. Uh, but I never run out of energy anyway because I use. 6% reduced energy cost and I'm very careful with not spamming abilities so much and not overdo this W because if you overdo this it drains your stuff so it it drains your energy by 13 per tick so I wouldn't stay there too long if I'm like full health I wouldn't do it right so really that's the build obviously journeyman riding horse because it's not worth risking of expensive mount in 2 hell cases there's no point so really that's the build um hopefully it helps you guys out it sure has helped me out i've won multiple games with this sadly i've actually deleted footage of me and my friend josh winning games um with this build so i am absolutely guttered by that um because there were some great clips that we've done um 
But yeah, I deleted the VODs because it had a lot of storage. So I'm kind of pissed off. I would have been put it in this video. It would have been really good to show you guys how this build works in action. Um, but there's always time for that. So we can, I mean, there's always, there's always time and room for ass kicking. I mean, we plan to do that. And we plan to put out hopefully a video for Albion where we kick ass with this build. And my friend playing DPS. By the way, my friend plays Spear. Uh, just to tell you, like, the combo that we use, um... Like this is the healer build and my friend uses the spear just to be precise here the spear that he uses if i actually remember where the speak spear category is i'm pretty sure it's because i'm not a spear user so um i believe it's in the hunter path right yes hunter path. He uses the spear that like you throw it there it is heron spear it's a spear that you throw and it stuns them so it's it's his style of gameplay and it's so good with like the healer build as well so heron spear really good really solid if you have a duo and he's he can't decide what kind of dps build he wants to go i would recommend the heron spear build uh but gear wise that's gonna be up to you um hell my friend josh could probably if you guys hop on my stream twitch chat he could probably explain that one day if we're playing albion but yeah that is pretty much it for the for the build. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this helped out. And I think this build is incredible. And yeah. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Peace out.